Hi, I'm Joni Petrie and welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, I want to continue on with my series about major life cycles, which are the doshas. So what I'm referring to in this series is the Vimshotri dasha system, which is based on where your natal moon is in your birth chart. It really depicts the entire cycles of your life. It's truly amazing that this works this way because depending on where your moon is, the nakshatra that it's in, whatever planet rules that nakshatra starts your entire life cycles. And there is a sequential pattern that they follow, but the beginning one will always be based on your natal moon, that nakshatra's ruler. So the one I want to talk about today is going to be Venus's cycle. Venus's cycle is, or Dasha, I should say, grand cycle is 20 years long. That is a really, really long cycle. So of course it has to be that the sub cycles are going to break it up and change it uh, tremendously. And remember once again, though, that the grand cycle, I always say, is the big picture. It's like the country you live in, whereas those sub-cycles are going to tell you what is exactly happening in your immediate environment. Now, there's so many variables to look at when we're looking at these cycles. And the main thing is, and that's what I'm going to go through with this, but later on I'll take you down, down the road of getting more detailed. But the main thing is where is that planet in your birth chart? And what houses does that planet rule in your birth chart? Those are the most important variables you have to spot right away. So when you go into Venus's cycle, Actually, for the beginning phase of it, it's very long. It's like three years that you just, you know, Venus, Venus. Remember, these cycles always start out with the same cycle as the sub-cycle. So you see there's the grand cycle and there's a sub-cycle. And actually, there's many sub-cycles, but the ones really to pay attention to is the grand cycle and the sub-cycle, which I call the Bukti. Some call it the Antara Dasha, but I was actually trained the, that the Antara Dasha is the third, the third sub-cycle down. But we're only, only going to uh, focus in on the Grand Cycle and the Bukti, or Antara, Antara Dasha, which is the second level down. Now, the way those two planets play out in your chart are really what's happening in your life. So it's not just the grand cycle, although the grand cycle depicts the big, big, big picture. The sub cycle gives you the immediate relevance of what you're experiencing. So when you first go into any new grand cycle, it's always Venus, Venus, Mercury, Mercury, Rahu, Rahu, K2, K2. And while you're in that beginning phase is where you become acclimated to that entire process that will be relevant for the next 20 years. That's how big this is. So let me go through the different houses and what you might be experiencing when you go into Venus cycle. Now, always remember Venus is a natural benefic. But if it is placed in a difficult house, has difficult aspects to it from malefic planets, natural malefics that is. And when I say natural malefic, I mean malefics are naturally malefic and the natural malefics are Saturn, Mars, Rahu, Ketu, and the sun is a mild malefic. But those are the malefics in a chart. So when they surround your dasha ruler, it, it would be a little bit more difficult. And depending on what house that this planet goes to. So let's talk about if you have Venus in the first house. Of course, the sign is going to be monumental as well. Such as if you have a Libra ascendant or a Taurus ascendant and you have Venus in the first house, this would mean that Venus is a very, very strong planet for you. 
And I would imagine it would be powerfully good because the first house is you. The first house is what you're all about, your self-confidence, your esteem, what you're all about. And if you have Venus in the first house, you're going to discover more about yourself. It's going to be something like even your how you look. You could change your look. Maybe all of a sudden you buy a whole new wardrobe. Venus is fashion. Venus is creativity. And Venus is beauty. And these are going to be things that appease you. These are going to be the things that you need around, around you in life. So going into the Venus Mahadasha and Venus is in the first house, it's going to be extraordinary. And especially if it's in a good sign. And a good sign would be the signs of rulership, which I just gave, which would be Taurus or Libra or Pisces. Pisces is Venus's exaltation sign. And this would bring out your need to be more expressive, more creative, surround yourself with beauty and feeling good about who you are. Artistic, musical, everything that deals with beauty becomes your passion. So if you have Venus in the second house, and you go into Venus's Mahadasha for the beginning phase of about three years, you're going to be inundated with all the things that the second house is about, such as finances and money. And if your Venus sits in a great sign, which once again is the rulers or exalt, ex, exaltation signs, it, it will prosper and do well. And by the way, the signs that Venus will do well in is actually the signs that are friends to Venus. Now the friend whole friendship scheme, it's kind of complicated, but let me just say this. If a planet rules the houses one, five, or nine for your chart, that planet is, is good for you. And it's from a certain planetary camp, such as Venus's planetary camp, deals with Venus, Mercury, and Saturn. Those three planets are friends to Venus. So therefore, if a planet rules or the signs that, that this, is in, this is part of, it will be friendly, such as Mercury rules Gemini and Virgo, where Except for Venus and Virgo, there's an exception to that rule because it's debilitated. Venus does not like to be in Virgo. It's too scrutinizing and critical. So if Venus is debilitated, it may cause some problems. But Venus being next to Saturn, be Venus being next to Mercury, Venus being next to, well, those are the two friends. Those are going to be the planets that don't harm Venus. And the signs, Capricorn, Aquarius, Gemini, are the signs that Venus will prosper in, aside from Taurus, Libra, and Pisces. So you see how the scheme works, but those are the signs that uplift. Now, Venus does not like to be in Scorpio because that's ruled by Mars. It's an enemy. Venus does not like to be, believe it or not, in uh, Sagittarius because Jupiter is not necessarily a friend, but Venus is exalted in Pisces. I know you just have to learn these things, uh, but these are the rules. So Venus also being in, let's see, the sun sign, Leo, or in the moon sign, Cancer. It's not the greatest expression for Venus's energy. It's just the way it is. But, um, but otherwise, pay attention more to what houses Venus rules in your chart and what house Venus sits in in your chart. So going back to the third house, well, no, the second house, I really didn't give you the lowdown of that. You will be concerned about finances and Venus brings money. So during the Venus, Venus Mahadasha, you should come more into wealth and money 
and family life improves. Don't forget the second house deals with our family and connections to our family members and memories to old childhood experiences in a good way if Venus sits in your second house. Now, if Venus is in the third house, you'll probably start traveling more, short distance, maybe a commute, you're, you're going places, and you'll probably want to learn something new. Take up some courses, go, go back to school, hobbies, creativity, writing, all of those things will start to bubble up and come through for you even though they may have never ever been a part of your life before these are going to activate this and don't forget the third house deals with brothers and sisters so you will be more and more connected with with your brothers and sisters when you go into this cycle now let's say you have venus in the fourth house and you go into this cycle this will probably be a move a change of residence and it will be a, a it, and if you're not going to move, it would be a facelift to your current home, renovating, making it more beautiful. Venus's beauty, decorating, decorating your home, possibly moving into a more beautiful home, something that's aesthetic, aesthetically beautiful. So this is going to be what that's about. And you'll become closer to your mother. And if your mother's no longer around, it's family that becomes your focus and you bring people together. You have family celebrations in, in the home. It, home and family will be a priority to you. So if you have Venus in the fifth house, you are an entrepreneur and you will probably end up starting a business or thinking about a business or investments and with venus especially if it's in a good sign in your fifth house you'll do exceptionally well with investing investing in the stock market investing in real estate any type of investments will do well and you're lucky Another thing the fifth house deals with is giving advice to other people. So you could begin to be an advisor to others. They come for your information. And the fifth house, of course, besides creativity and information that just floods in your mind, total creative uh, mind starts up, also, it's a time that you will have more contact with children, maybe even the birth of a new child, or that you're going to connect more with even other people's children. But if you do have children, they will have awards and wonderful things come to them because Venus is a great natural benefic and it prospers beautifully in the fifth house. You have beautiful children. Your children are important to you. And with Venus in the fifth house, you are creative, whether it's artistic in any way, musical, uh, it will definitely, definitely be about some new interest, creating something new. Okay. Now let's talk about if you have Venus in your sixth house and you start your Venus Mahadasha. This is about work and service. And primarily, if you have Venus in the sixth house, you should experience good health, strong constitution and health. And you will do something possibly in the work field dealing with Venusian type things, which can be creativity or working with foods, diet, nutrition. That will be an interest in a positive way. Working out, getting uh, fit and in shape again if you have Venus in the sixth house and you go into this dasha. Plus co-workers, the people that you work with at work, they will be easier to work with. You'll find it's a good time to relate to other workers and possibly if you own your own business, it's the best time to start hiring new employees that will help your work expand and grow. So when Venus is in your seventh house and you go into Venus's Mahadasha, yes, people find you much more attractive. Also, Venus in the first house will do that. People find you attractive, but sometimes if you're married, that can cause problems and issues in a relationship. 
there could be jealousy. They say Venus in the seventh house is not that great for marriage because you have so many people that are drawn to you. And when you're married, that can be a problem, okay? But this is also a great time to start business relationships, business connections, because Venus is a great benefic. And the seventh house is not just marriage. It deals with contractual agreements we have with others. And if you're starting a business with a partner, this would bring this on. This would be something good with business and partnerships. So let's go back to the eighth house. What if you have Venus in the eighth house? Well, there can be a lot that bubbles up from this. Many, many, many times it, well, you have the desire to research and analyze things, maybe get into psychology, self-awareness, self-analysis, but be aware that this is the house of scandals and you do not think that you're going to get away with something because this will bring it out in the open. And this is, you know, this is where it's uh, truth or consequences, right? So, <laughs> so Venus in the eighth house, it can deal with psychic ability, bringing out your gifts in awareness. But please, please uh, be careful because this is a house that can deal with disgrace, humiliation, and scandals. So don't be uh, rocking the boat too much here and thinking uh, that people won't find out about something because this would be the time it could all unveil. If you have Venus in the ninth house and you go into Venus's Mahadasha, it's a time of learning, going back to school, higher education, and it's travel. You will be traveling long distances, faraway places, learning a lot about different cultures and environments. You may become closer to your father during this time, or even something comes through to you from him, even if he's not, not here. You will have a great relationship and rapport with teachers, uh, people who give us guidance. But most of all, the ninth house is our spirituality, our truth. And I feel like you're coming into your own with learning more about what is true, what you believe, your spirituality, and maybe even you become a teacher in this area. So if Venus is in your 10th house and you go into Venus's Mahadasha, this is brilliant for your career. You will get a promotion. You will come to some new advancements. You will find that people recognize you and give you credit where it's due for a long time dealing with work and career. It feels like your purpose comes alive and it feels like you're recognized by the people in your workplace. And maybe it's time to start your own business if that's always been uh, something you've wanted to do. And depending on the sign that Venus is in, it could be something artistic. So it may be a change for work and career. If Venus is in your 11th house, this is a time of social events. The 11th house is friends, groups, and organizations, but all of a sudden you are a social butterfly going to more parties and lectures and, and groups where you meet a lot of new interesting people, beautiful people, I might add, yes. Uh, Venus being in the 11th house, you could become closer to your older sibling if you have one. And also Venus in the 11th house means wealth will be yours, especially from the work you do. Remember the 11th house is the second from the 10th, the money made from your career. And this means it flourishes. You have more and more money coming in from the work you do. And you're recognized. 
and you may meet some very influential, beautiful people. They'll come alive in your life as well. So new friends, new associates, and connections with this one. Now, if Venus is in your 12th house, this is a time, well, you know, here's something interesting. Venus is the only planet that does not lose strength in the 12th house. And it would be a time that you pull away and become vastly creative. And not only that, wealthy. Money seems to come from the past, from other people. And through your creative projects, money comes in. You will have very vivid and important dreams when you sleep at night. Pay attention. There is some valuable, valuable information that is due to come to you while Venus, with Venus, being in your 12th house and moving into that Mahadasha. So it also brings back many things and people from the past because the 12th house is the past and you may be bringing major projects to completion things that you couldn't ever get completed, this would be the time that completion comes about in this initial phase of Venus, Venus, Mahadasha. So with that, I've covered all the houses. And remember the house that Venus rules, if it rules one, five, and nine, regardless of the other houses it rules, Venus is a wonderful, wonderful planet for your chart. So so generally, Venus will bring good things if you have a Gemini Ascendant, if you have a Libra Ascendant, if you have um, Taurus Ascendant, if you have Capricorn or Aquarius. Actually, Venus is your Yoga Karaka planet, which makes it extraordinarily powerful. So those are going to be the ascendants that Venus gives power to. And then again, whatever house it's in, those issues, those life experiences will be the most prominent during this entire 20 year cycle, although the Bukti planet will give you more of the result of what you see in your immediate environment. But when you first move into Venus, you'll get these effects. You'll get some of the effects that I just spoke about. That's a promise. So with that, I'm going to close. I hope you gained some valuable information about moving into a particular dasha. Remember, when you first change into a new dasha, your whole life changes because a whole different focus in your life becomes prominent depending on where that planet is in your birth chart. So with that, I'll close. If you would like more information on me, remember you can always go to my website, which is galacticcenter.org. Don't forget to sign up for my free newsletter. And if you would like to take this to another level, study Vedic astrology with me, go to my university website, which is universityofvedicastrology.com. Thank you.